willingness is something that yeah you have you have to offer that's why in a course in miracles he keeps just saying just offer your little willingness he says it over and over and over in the course just offer your little willingness and he does one place in the course where he basically says it takes great willingness to see that all events and outcomes and situations are f are, f are helpful are for your good so there's all these little willingnesses <laughs> and one great willingness <laughs> in which which would be all things work together for good there are no exceptions and everything is the divine flow nothing's ever been wrong some of you might have seen when i post that uh, that uh, oprah winfrey uh, talk on i posted where she was like saying there are no mistakes we there are really no mistakes you can never make you know she's all lit up it's just that moment of of starting to see there's a perfection there and it always has been it wasn't that the mistakes were real you know they were tricks too to to bring guilt and and so ultimately the willingness is something that you can and must offer that's why every day you know uh, i am willing uh, i am here only to be truly helpful you know here i am lord it's what Jesus gave Helen to tell Bill Thedford, you know, he wanted a prayer and she gave him here I am Lord, a four word prayer for Bill. Okay. <laughs> you know, here, here's give this to Bill. He'll use he'll need this because he he can't he won't get lost in this. Here I am Lord. That was the phrase that Jesus gave through Helen to Bill to really focus on. And and you could even have a three word prayer I am willing you know as you wake up in the morning I I am willing for miracles I am willing to open my heart I am willing to follow you Holy Spirit I am willing to serve your plan God you know you can put whatever variation you want it but that's what you can offer you can offer willingness and the more you offer it the the broader it gets towards that great willingness you know that's that's beyond anything of this world it's a it's a different way of looking at the world is what what the ultimate outcome is it's a different perspective on the world it's the holy spirit's forgiven world is the highest you can go now readiness is one of those things that human beings can't even begin to comprehend readiness because it's not something that's time and it's it's not in time and space uh, some of you are familiar with the Urantia book, and in the Urantia book it says that Jesus went through lifetimes of preparation to be ready for his bestowal as the Christ. In other words, work was, there was like I think seven bestowals, which isn't bad when you hear about some of these past life regressions. 150 what? <laughs> you know, am I the dunce of the universe or whatever you know? So Jesus had seven, ooh, seven, seven bestowals, and then the seventh bestowal was, was the Christ lifetime, was the waking up. You've heard Gary Renard, Disappearance of the Universe, talk about it's not my time, this lifetime, but next lifetime, I get you know enlightened, and then there's talk of different ones and different lifetimes. But so you see, he had to be ready. We'll say from that metaphor. Number seven, <laughs> lucky seven. It was it, he was ready to go all the way to accept the atonement. We'll say from that perspective in that lifetime. Other lifetimes all point you to the same direction because there's only one direction to go, and that's God. It's not like there's multiple dimensions, and you know you can. I want to see this God in this galaxy and go. We got that God over in that galaxy. No, there's just one God, and so it's all one direction. But it's how how ready am I to accept the atonement and that's what I was talking about with readiness but but it's not something that that can be grasped by humans because it's almost like if you had to throw human words to it almost like the accumulation of readiness <laughs> from however many bestowals or lifetimes you seem to have lived you're just building the momentum building that momentum and that's what 
even uh, Eastern texts, when they talk about karma and reincarnation, that you keep incarnating and reincarnating, coming towards perfection. You're, you're moving through time and space and being carried and drawn back by the light, back into the light, as the light. And that's what awakening is.